Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Good Isle Games, and welcome to June's monthly roundup video, the one where I talk to you about the changes to my board game collection. Well, for the most part at least. <laughs> Hi folks, welcome again to another monthly roundup video, the one where, yeah, I talk about what I've been playing, what new games I've picked up, general gaming stuff, and a bit of personal chit chat at the end if you're interested in hearing any of that. Um, but yeah, how has this month been for your gaming? Um, I'm a big fan of taking stock of things. Um, I love looking back and seeing how many things I've played or is this stuff like that. So I'd love to hear what's been hitting your table. Um, for me, when I kind of look back at the end of the month, I wish there was more plays. I, I think I, I might always wish that. But I kind of decided that, you know, you can't just be you know, loads of games, loads of games, loads of games all the time without feeling a little bit burnt out. So I think I'm on the way out of a burning out. Um, but I've had some really fun games this month um, and I can't wait to tell you all about them. So as usual, what we're going to do, the first section here will be for new games I've acquired. The second section is going to be for some games I've been playing and stuff like that. And then the third is for just kind of general chit chat malarkey stuff. And I'm putting timestamps in the video so you can hop about as you wish, but I would love for you to stay it'd also be fun if you subscribed as well because lots of people watch the channel but don't subscribe I'm not sure what that means but anyway um it's good for me and it's good for you guys too um you can always hear about new videos that way all right so less of that whole you know like me um shindig um i'm going to jump right in with the first purchase of this month which came right at the end of last month but missed the video cut off um and this is a game i've been really 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 excited about and feels like it took ages to get to the shops and this is ultimate rail Railroads. Um, okay, so what's Ultimate Railroad? <laughs> yes, it's a train game, did you guess? Um, but this is kind of a, a reworking. So there was a game called Russian Railroads, um, which is kind of a worker placement game where you would build out your tracks and try and kind of, kind of get bonus multipliers to make parts of your track worth more points, like that kind of thing. Um, and I have played Russian Railroads and I really enjoyed it. Um, but it's kind of the game, I always felt like it was a little bit solvable, at least um, for the people I play with. So that when playing Russian Railroads, um, I, I don't know, I would get beat, I would get beaten a lot. But um, my husband managed to get to the point where he could basically get a really high score, like the same number nearly every time. So there's something about about this game that's um, very logical or you could definitely learn strategies and things like that. And while I still enjoyed the game, it wasn't very fun, I think, for my husband to kind of have solved it. Um, but I really liked it nonetheless and moved it on. Now, the fun part is Russian Railroads um, is out of print. It was very hard to get a copy. It was kind of expensive. And there are other um, versions of it, well, like expansions. There's German Railroads and things like that, which were even more expensive. So what's happened now is they've come out with this Ultimate Railroad edition which has not only Russian railroads but German railroads and looks like American railroads in the box as well for you to play with so I was super 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 excited to see this and that was in part because I'd always kind of hoped that if we'd had access maybe to the expansion or something like that it could have expanded the game a little bit so that maybe it wouldn't have been so formulaic if that makes sense um so yeah really excited when this came into the shop it's a really big box like a really, really big box. Um, it's got a beautiful insert into it that you construct and it works on multiple levels, which I also thought was very impressive. And naturally, the first thing we did when we opened the box was just play Russian Railroads because, you know, that's what we had played before. Um, and you know what? I remembered it much better than I thought I would. I, th I think it's a really fun game. Like, it's a very simple concept, which is, you know, use your workers to allow you to be able to place railroads or gain bonuses or things like that. And then use these bonuses on your tracks to try and maximize your points. Um, I like the player board itself because it's your own set of trains and you can visualize the track getting bigger with kind of as your pieces move along it. Um, and I like that I like that part about it too. Um, it, it's mostly a solitaire game um, but I'm not going to complain about that. Maybe with a little bit of jostling for spaces on the kind of the worker placement board but it's simple um but kind of very thinky at the same time so i'm del i'm delighted with it actually yeah i i really like it if that's like you know i think you'll know if you like this or not um very quickly just because it's so kind of procedural um but i'm looking forward to trying out the expansions just like i always dreamed of and now they're available for everybody so um i do love me a good reprint um yeah it's <laughs> so russian russian railroads well i'm gonna keep calling it that i'm gonna tell you despite it 
being ultimate railroads. Um, I am just excited to, you know, get more plays of it down. So yeah, that was the first purchase of the month. So game two on the list is one that came recommended by you, the viewers, which is incredibly exciting. Um, so a couple of months back, I was talking about Lost Runes of Arnak, um, which is a really fun um, exploration game with some hand management and worker placement as you kind of explore this island you've never come across before and you're trying to uncover the secrets of the temple. Um, yeah, I absolutely think the theme is a bit questionable, but the gameplay here is, is very good. And I've enjoyed the game quite a bit. Um, and so in the comment section for one of my videos, someone recommended, you know, or suggested the expansion to this, which is Expedition Leaders. And I finally picked this up. Um, and this was actually really cool. I like this a lot because in the, the basically what it does is it adds some nice things to the main game without really changing it too much. Um, so the most notable feature, I think, in, in my mind is the fact that you have specific characters you can play as um, and they are asymmetric. They have their own little power or their little gimmick. Um, I had a lot of fun with the falconeer character who had her own bird that could go and pick up stuff. You could send it out to, you know, get you bonuses and then it would like return back and you could like plan exactly where it was going to go. Um, I liked that a lot. Um, my opponent also had a very cool character that did something interesting. Um, allowing them to kind of use extra research assistance um, and I, f I found that this was like a really um, small but really nice way to kind of enhance the, the main game a bit um, and so I like that a lot. I think there are also additional tiles and cards that um, are added into the main game um, including a card to replace something from the original that they kind of thought needed adjusting which I thought was a nice touch was in the expansion. Um, so yeah I, I really like that. Um, usually when <laughs> usually when I buy an expansion that usually murders the game because, um, because I don't know if you feel the same way but sometimes you'll buy an expansion for a game and you're like oh this is really exciting but then it kind of bloats the game out and makes the game slightly too big so you're not as encouraged to take it off the shelf as you might have been if everything was just in the box um, and that happens a lot here a lot of games had died once I bought expansions but this one feels really light and it feels like it fits it feels like it could have been in the main box um, so I think that's a real plus um, but yeah, so it was nice to see this host of characters, you know, be your own person just a little bit, but not so much that the game really altered a lot. And so yeah, so have fun with that. Um, can definitely recommend if you're a fan of the base game, the expansion is a, is a nice bonus um, for sure. Okay, so I have one more game left, I believe, and this was not of my choosing. Um, and this is Project L. So I'd seen pictures of this around the internet. Um, actually, just the box, because the box is kind of like, ooh, what's this? It's all black and sleek. Um, and I had kind of made the assumption that it was kind of a casual game, you know, that you might play with people who were new to gaming and stuff like that. It wouldn't necessarily appeal to me. Um, but my husband wanted to pick it up. Um, and I'm like, hey, games are games. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Um, so sure enough, we gathered Project L. And much to my surprise, it was a Polyonimo game inside the box. I didn't, know, I didn't know that. I didn't really know anything about it. So I went in knowing nothing. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm not good with Polyonimo shapes. Um, and I try my best to avoid having too many of them. They're very on trend at the moment, aren't they? Games with those Tetris pieces. There's lots of them. Um, and this was another. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Um, the good news is, is that this is a polyonimo game well worth having. Um, and this one surprised me. And like I said, I didn't have many expectations. So maybe, maybe that helped, maybe it didn't. But it does a couple of things that are very clever. So um, this is actually really funny because normally when I learn how to play a game, my first question I ask is, so who are we? What are we trying to do? Uh, so we sat down to play Project L. I'm like, who are we? What are we trying to do? Um, and my poor husband's like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, is there not a description in the rule book of, you know, the theme? Yeah, there's no theme. This is an abstract game. Um, of course, I didn't know that. So who are we? <laughs> we're, we're, we're people making Tetris pieces. I'm like, okay. Um, and so what the game is about is that there are patterns you are trying to fit these textures shaped pieces into. So these come in kind of little recess boards and you have a number of pieces that are little Tetris pieces. And so you can draft these puzzles and fill them in with your pieces for points. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a simple idea. Um, and there's a couple of things though that make this much more clever than it has any right to be. So the first is that you can you do three actions on your turn. 
Um, so you are able to place single pieces out into your puzzle pieces, which is always good. Um, you can also get a level one te um, Tetris shaped piece. And what this means is the, the, the pieces are at different levels, one to four. And so like a little, a little single cube and a little double cube are both level one. But you can upgrade them to the next level. Um, and so there's an action to upgrade your pieces. So they can upgrade all the way to like the big pieces, like the long stick and the big squares um, and things like that. Um, the other thing that you can do is, so you can take puzzle, so let me, let me go through this in order. So you can take puzzle pieces, you can place puzzles out, pieces out and um, you can upgrade your piece and then this is the best part there's a master kind of action we kept calling it the master builder action even though this is not lego themed um, and what this allowed you to do was to put one of the um of your tetris pieces in each puzzle piece you had ready to fill in so you can have a maximum of four so this is the one where the game got really smart for me because you were like you were like oh if i get these pieces i can fill it i can co complete multiple puzzles at the same time right so you're not wasting actions which i thought was super smart um and i like that i was kind of trying to line things up so i complete things and when you complete a puzzle they're worth victory points but they also can give you other puzzle pieces so you see what I mean here? So you're kind of comboing in. And this is what blew my mind, folks. Um, so I finished my first puzzle piece and I was like, yeah, okay. So I take out my little pieces I put inside it, all the little Tetris little pieces, and I put it into my score pile. And I was getting ready to throw away my pieces. And my husband's like, no, you keep your pieces after you fill them in, so you get them back. So the game escalates. As you get more pieces, you can fill more puzzles, but you get more pieces. Um, this is genius. <laughs> and I don't know why it felt genius, but I think, I was expecting the game to be very much I would just take my pieces fill them into the shape throw away begin again where really this is kind of more like um, an efficiency puzzle um, and I really really liked it it was really fun I've also shown it to some friends and they really enjoyed it as well um, so that's always a good sign for a game um, so yeah Project L was entirely surprising it's very quick to play and it's quite pretty I really like the pieces that were in it I like the little recess things I like your little polyanimo things so yeah for a polyanimo game this did surprisingly well um, so yeah, I can I can highly recommend this. I thought it would be a good bit lighter than it is, um, but yeah, there's still a good bit of thought to it. It's a it's a puzzly thing. Um, yeah, definitely enjoyed it. So that's the most and the last purchase of this month. Gonna run out of things to purchase soon, lads. I'm just waiting for my, my game shop to just go. Oh, sorry, doors closed. We've we've got in everything new we could find. Um, so yeah, but I'm sure I'll somehow break that rule soon enough. So tell me, um, what have you picked up this month? Um, I would love to hear about it. Anything really, really good? And yeah, I, I always ask this as well. Anything surprising? Because I'm a big fan of a surprise. Good old Project L for bringing me a surprise this month. Um, so yes, okay, so fantastic. That's the first bit. So I'll very quickly talk about some games I've been playing. So these won't be new things. Um, but yeah, hopefully exciting nonetheless. All right, let's roll. All right, so games I've been playing. Um, this month's been a bit unusual in the sense that I've managed to acquire a group of players. Um, well, when I say group of players, I have uh, there's a, there would be four of us playing a game, and this is this is really unusual because normally I play everything two player as well, you know. Um, but I had a number of games to review that required extra players, and so I, I gathered some magic players to come and play board games with me. Um, thank thank goodness for friendship, right? <laughs> because I don't know what I do without it. Um, so it's been it's been um, both weird and awesome having more people play games because I've had them recently noticing it really changed the dynamics of a number of games when you have more than just two. And not only just two, but two people who are... You know when you're well used to playing with each other, you know exactly what you'll pick, I know what you'll pick, you do your thing. You know what I mean? As in, I think... I think it takes some of the dy dynamism basically that board games have. Um, so I'm going to start with talking about this board game that arrived last month and required four to five players so I couldn't do anything about it but I've gathered myself by four players and this is Crescent Moon from Osprey Games. Um, and when I saw this I was so excited uh, that I was sad and then I was excited and then the player account continued to make me sad because I don't normally have these people um, around. So I got very fortunate to have some friends come and play this with me. Um, so what is Crescent Moon all about? Um, so this is basically an asymmetric area control game in which you're kind of in the ancient east. Um, 
north, south, east, yes, east. <laughs> and you're taking on different roles. So you're playing as different factions. Um, each kind of have their own powers. Each have their own way of scoring. Each have their um, way of kind of winning. And you are playing on a, a map that, you know, looks like... Um, Catan, you know, a, a hexagon map that's kind of pre-built. And so you're trying to kind of put out buildings, make connections with people, play cards, um, and basically have an, things in place so that you will be able to score them. Um, so this is kind of a very interactive game, um, but in a very rigid way, because, so for instance, when you pick your faction um, you get a little booklet that tells you what you need to know about it kind of what they're good at what they're trying to do who they want to be friends with and and it goes through in great detail how to score your points what everything's worth and I have to say this is one of the best handouts I've ever had in a game um, especially explaining a game that's asymmetric um, to other people um, explaining how other factions and things work is is a, is a well-known problem um, and I think this game does it very very well there was a nice little introductory piece that told me you know what I was trying to do how I could get there who I might want to be friends with um, and what's odd about that is that the, the factions are made in such a way that they, certain ones will want to interact with each other and certain ones won't. So it seemed almost quite deterministic in how your playstyle was going to go based on your faction. Um, definitely less kind of open to, you know, your own playstyle um, than you might have anticipated from a game that's, you know, given, has you, you have your own powers. Um, you're you're kind of, it's very focused like that. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of different roles you could play. Um, so you were basically able to be the people who were building things you were the people who kind of had all the money you had the people who did all the shady dealings with the secrets and the cards um i was the warlord which made loads of sense um and i was just out to kind of i don't know watch the world burn i suppose um there is another character but they don't get played with unless you know there are five of you so there you know there's one faction i didn't get to see at all um, but you know what? We actually had a lot of fun with it. Um, and also, like I think part of the fun of it was the haggling and discussing with each other. Because a lot of it comes down to who has presence where on the board and what you're going to allow other people to do around you. Um, and so we had alliances and they're like a, you know the, <laughs> the alliance of Brian's versus the rest of us. Um, and I ha yeah, I, I enjoyed it actually. I, I do think it is quite rigid in its playing. And I think... I wonder what it gets stale the more of it you played because your play style is kind of determined by which faction you're playing. Um, but I think that's also a bonus as well, um, knowing exactly how everything works. Um, this is a game I think that's entirely made by who you're playing with. Um, yeah, we just had a lot of fun kind of role playing our characters and being angry at each other for all sorts of great reasons. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's a long game. It took... I think it took two and a half hours um, for the first time to play, but I think it's a game that is supposed to take um, an amount of time. But if you're into that kind of thing and haggling with your friends, I think this is really nicely done. Um, I have to say the production's not bad either. I just, I can't get over those little kind of rule sheet we were given. I thought they were exceptional um, and really helped somebody like me who would forget stuff most of the way during the game. I could just be like, what am I trying to do? It says here exactly what I need to do to get points. So I appreciate that. So that's Crescent Moon. Um, there'll be a full review for that kind of coming soon. It's going to have to be a first impressions because I'm not going to be able to get multiple plays in of it like I would normally for my reviews. So um, I'll give you more information and it'll probably sound something like what I just said, but maybe a little bit more. But yeah, fun stuff. Very, very good looking game. Um, right. So next on the agenda, where will I go with this? OK, I'll go. I'll, I'll go with this because I, th I was thinking about it so much. Um, I want to know, do you have a game on yourself that you feel like you should be playing and yet still never play it? Um, and for me, this is Brass. Um, I own both Birmingham and Lancashire. Um, so I have, I have both versions of Brass and I have the, the Iron Clays and yet we never play Brass. And every time I look at it on the shelf, I'm like, I really should play, play Brass. Um, and I don't. And I don't know why I never quite get it there. And I, and I think it's because... I don't know. Brass is problematic for me because every time I've played it, and I've played it like four or five times now, there's been quite a distance between the plays. So it always ends up like I feel like I'm learning brass every time I play it. And brass, I think, is the type of game that deserves repeat plays, multiple plays. I think for you to really like develop strategies and plans and things like that. And it's definitely a game where you want to plan. 
So what's it about? Well, it's speaking of a game, let me tell you. And it's basically about kind of setting up industries in various towns and exporting them so that you can make money. Yeah, I think that's right. And um, the cool thing about brass is that, so the game starts and the map is empty and you start filling it out and you use the canals to connect the towns so that you can export your wares. And then there's a point, you know, in the game where you know, that age finishes and a new one begins and you lose kind of all your low level buildings and all your canals. And then now you're into steamways, <laughs> steamways, railways and steam trains to transport your goods instead. So you're kind of like, rebuilding but you can have everything set up kind of from the first age to help you in the second um so you can see why the planning is very important so every time i play this i feel like i'm playing it for the first time um now the good news is is that this is an exceptionally good game i've never finished a game of it and gone oh god i don't know if i'll play that again no it's really really good it's i love the way it's all connected together um i think it's very smart um you can like use other people's kind of um, networks to transport your goods um i love the fact so when you place something out on the board it'll have a resource on it, a number of cubes and when you use up those resources it flips and then it'll give you like income instead um and and victory points and i love the way that works and that you can use other people's goods in certain situations to flip their tiles but it'll you know give you an immediate benefit like it's a really smart game um and it's a really really good one but for some reason it always just in, intimidates me a bit because i often wonder i'm like should i get rid of brass because we're not playing it but i always think it's such a, a crackingly good game i just i feel like i need to play it a couple of times back to back um and it's a big game and it takes a bit of time so it, it never quite gets there um but i'm still a very big fan of brass i'd love to know um you know what you guys think of it it's, it's a pretty popular game i know lots of people really really love it and i do too but i don't know why i find it so hard to play it even though i enjoy it um but yeah so it's gone back on the shelf we'll see we'll see if i play it again you know within the next year or so and have the same argument with myself um but yeah do you have a game that's on the shelf that you feel like i should be playing this but you're not i challenge you to take it down off the shelf and give it a go and decide whether it's worth keeping or not that is, yeah, that is, my, that is my challenge of the day. Um, so yeah, so those kind of things I've been playing. Uh, I'm glad I got Brass off of, the, off of the shelf. It got there in the end. So um, that's pretty good. Um, so the last game I'll talk about, and I'll do this really quickly, um, because I think I will always talk about this game because it's so good. And this is Raja of the Ganges. So I've, um, <laughs> it's a dice placement game, worker, but, oh, another worker placement game, guys. I made, it, I made a bold statement yesterday going, I only own two real worker placement games. And then was quickly proven how everything I own has worker placement in it. But as I said, I wouldn't count it worker placement unless I had a little worker and he was going out doing things. So that was the main part of the game. But maybe I'm just lying to myself. It's very possible. So, Raja the Ganges, um, in which, yes, you are a Raja, and there is a river <laughs> through the middle of the board. Um, and this game is crackingly good. Now, the board is a bit overwhelming not gonna lie um, but it's got lots of elements to it um, and they kind of fit together nicely and um, so what this is about is that you're basically trying to manage your wealth with kind of you know how, how good you are your kind of virtue or your kind of that, that kind of feeling there there are two tracks on the board one which is your money and one which is you know how kind of how good you are um, and the game will end when those two tracks cross each other if you've played Ark Nova you've heard of this um, and and this game came first so good old, good old Russia the Ganges so essentially it's kind of like a race game um, but what you're doing is you have a number of meeples and a number of coloured dice and you use the coloured dice to do a variety of things out on the, the board um, based on their colour and their pip number, right? Um, so you have your own player mat as well and it's kind of like your lands and you're able to place pieces out on it Carcassonne style connecting up roads and things for bonuses um, and those tiles will also kind of have resources on them which will, you know you can use to, to make money um, you can go up the river um, which is in the middle of the, the board and that has all sorts of bonuses um, you can place palaces as well these are kind of on the tiles that go on your, your little player board and those can be worth victory points and a lot of it really is about switching dice to be the right colors and the right numbers so you can do exactly what you want um it's a it's a beautiful game i think it's really fun i love the way everything fits together and the first player is an elephant marker 
Yay! So that always adds something to it. Um, it doesn't take super long to play. And I played it with four players this week, which is why I'm mentioning it, because I, I got to show it to somebody new. Um, and it's funny, isn't it, how when you've been playing a game for a while, you don't really... It all, you know so much about it, it kind of all blurs out. So then when you teach it to someone else, you're like, wow, that was actually a lot. There's a lot going on here to explain that I never really noticed till I had to tell somebody else how it worked. Um, and I know for our new player, it was definitely kind of like, whoa, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of things to do. Um, and I think, yeah, definitely there's a lot of that going on here. Everything kind of combos into each other a little bit. And that's one of my favorite features. Um, I love that about it. Um, so yeah, if you're a big fan of colour D dice games, um, this one is is a riot, I think is the best way to put it. It's really fun. I have something nice about it. Even when I don't win, I don't feel bad about it because you you know, you're just trying to get as much money and, and be as good a person as possible. <laughs> so yeah, it, that's re really exciting. Um so yeah, I like it's nice to show um somebody you know new a game you really love right and try and not be overbearing about it i'm like you're gonna love this because i love it no you don't feel like that you're really quiet you're like here's how it is if you need some help let me know and you wait silently till you hear their verdict <laughs> at least that's what i try to do anyway but it's all it's always fun to have you know new people see your games in a new light so that's exciting all right, so that is enough about games for now. I'm gonna have a very kind of quick chit chat at the bottom if you wanna join me. Um, and I'll figure out what I've been up to by the time I get there. Firstly, let us say a prayer to the gods of lighting in the hope this new setup has worked. Um, I, I come back with this every couple of months. I'm never entirely happy with how these videos look. And so every so often I'm like, oh, I have to move everything around and try everything out. So um, yeah, I'll just, you know, say a little prayer and <laughs> hope for the best. Okay, so um, let's see. So first things first, the channel stuff. Um, thanks for watching my Would You Rather video. Um, kind of had a lot of, a lot of fun coming up with the idea for that and deciding what it was going to be about. If you haven't watched it yet, it's basically a very quick video where I decide whether I would bin, buy or borrow um, three board games I choose at random for my collection. Um, and thanks for all your feedback. So what it means is I'm going to make a second episode and um, I'm going to add more pictures and video and things like that because, um, yeah, it was a bit barren in the first episode, but, you know, you know, this is where we were going. This is was the test or the pilot. So um, hopefully there will be more of that soon. Certainly puts you on the spot, though, having to decide between your games like that in a hurry. Yeah, rough stuff, but um, there's more of that coming soon. Um, and in other news is I have a Kickstarter preview coming soon for Moon, which is from Sinister Fish Games. And I haven't talked about that earlier in this simply because it's kind of um, an embargo or things like that where I'm not supposed to talk about it till later. Um, but these are the people um, who made like streets and villages, you know, those kind of little long white boxes. Um, so that was really exciting and fun. And so that's coming out on the 12th of this month. Um, to, so keep your eyes peeled for that and I'll have my video to go so you can hear everything about it. I'm very proud of that intro video. I tried very hard to make things space-like. Um, so, <laughs> so that's been the excitement. What else has been happening? So I've still been taking a load of photos. So many photos that I'm still trying to get around to editing. Um, I do it like a once a week photo dump on um, Twitter if you're interested in checking that out um, of all sorts of bits and bobs. But I kind of got into bird watching out of nowhere. I just kind of like taking pictures of birds and then I realized there were birds in my back garden. So I went all out. I got like a bird feeder <laughs> and a book about birds, which has been entirely useless. And I've been watching um, very diligently in my backyard trying to make friends um, with the local bird wildlife. Um, it looks like I have a whole family of, um, oh my god, house sparrows living outside, which is kind of exciting, and, and a couple of other things floating around as well. Um, so yeah, it's funny thinking there's a whole world going on outside your world. There's nothing really to do with it, isn't it? Like the birds are just living their lives out there. And of course, I've been going kind of on weekly adventures to like seaside locations is usually where I am, or usually where I end up, um, weather permitting and things like that. So yeah, that's been kind of cool. I, I don't know, um, you know, how, how interested um, people are, I suppose, a bits of photography and thing like, things like that, but I've been really enjoying it. And it's really odd that it's hard to find a place to just share like photographs or things like that for people who might like to see them. I don't particularly want to overload, you know, the board game stuff with kind of my own stuff but then again how do you really tell those things apart most of the time 
Yeah, so the other fun thing going on is I've been going to the movies, going to the movies a lot. I think I said this last month. I got like a cheap cinema pass deal, so I have been to see a number of things recently. Um, so yeah, I also put that out on Twitter too, my thoughts on those kind of things. Um, I went to see the Elvis movie last Friday. Um, I used to love Baz Luhrmann. Wasn't a big fan of the Elvis movie, but the young fellow who plays Elvis is absolutely spectacular. Really, really good stuff. Um, what else to say? Rambo was in my cinema um, on Monday night, and that was exciting. And by Rambo, I mean First Blood. Yes, it's the, the, the proper title. Um, and it was really cool to see that on the big screen. Um, I love seeing old movies. Well, old, yeah, I suppose it's 40 years. Oh my God, I'm so old. Yes, yeah, the 40-year anniversary for, for First Blood. Um, that's why it was in the cinema, and I really, really enjoyed seeing that. I'm trying to think what else I want to see because I know I've seen I've seen every I've seen everything um, um, lately, um, but yeah, it's been fun. I've been doing my best to keep getting out of the house, even though it's exceedingly difficult. Um, and also in Ireland, we just have no summer, at least not anytime soon. Like, yeah, this is June. We what? Yes, no, it is June. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we haven't really had any sunshine or any nice things or anything like that. So it's been very, oh, whoa, whoa. Um, but yeah, you got to make the best of it sometimes, don't you? But um, otherwise, so I have, a, I have a bunch of reviews I'm getting ready to put together, which is, I suppose, good. Um, I'm definitely tired and stuff's hard, but I'm getting there. So I'm plowing my way along um as usual and kind of yeah enjoying and trying to enjoy games and things as much as possible i think sometimes you really do just need a break from something even though you love it right um because you know as i think as i said at the start there's only so long you could be really intense about something um before you're going to burn out yeah makes sense um so yeah i'll keep it short and sweet this month um from my end mostly because i don't think i have anything else exciting to report just still making stuff so the, yeah there'll be more videos soon um i'm looking forward to hearing what you guys um have been up to tell me how has your month been you know irrelevant of games or whatever um how are you keeping i hope you're good um i hope everything is going well for you um and if it isn't chin up we may all soldier on right <laughs> um brilliant all right so thank you all for watching um tune in again next time i suppose for some more monthly round of videos and keep your eyes peeled for um some other videos too all right enjoy your gaming and i'll talk to you all soon take care everybody bye bye